everyone, this is Matt Tu Show with Intro Stats, and today we're looking at some various ways of collecting data. So in our last video, we talked about how there's two main types of data, uh, categorical data and, and quantitative data. Today we're going to be looking at, uh, starting to look at some of the various ways that people collect data, sort of the good and the bad. Okay, so some people uh, collect data in a way that's good, and some people um, collect some data that's maybe not so good. So let's talk a little bit about these different ways of collecting data. Now, we're going to get some new vocabulary words here. So one of the first ones is population. When you're collecting data, you always want the data to represent the population you're after. So it's important that we have an idea of what the word population means in our head. So the, uh, a good definition of population, think of it as the collection of all people or objects that you plan to study. So you can have a very small population or you can have a very big population. Right? I could have maybe the population of, uh, maybe my population is um, uh, just uh, the students at a small high school. You know, it could be a very small population. Or it might be a very gigantic population, like all people in the world might be my population, or maybe all people in the U.S. That might be a, that that might be my population. Those the bigger the population, the harder it is to sort of figure out what's going on in that population. So kind of it's a good good rule of thumb to kind of think about. <clears throat> so one of the first ways that we collect data is. Um, that we, one of the first methods I'm going to talk about is called a census. Now most of you probably have heard of the word census. Um, so this means you're trying to collect data from everyone in your population. So you're trying to basically get data from just about everybody in your population. Now all, not all censuses, uh, when somebody does a census it doesn't always succeed. They don't always get everybody in their population. Uh, but they sure try, okay? They try to get everybody. Um, and even if they don't get everybody, they still get a very high percentage of the population. So census is probably, it is, the best in terms of the method. If you really want data that's going to reflect your population, a census is the best way to go. Because you're really just about getting data from just about everybody. So, for example, um, at, at our college, when the students sign up uh, to take classes at our college, um, they have to register, right, and provide the college information about themselves. So uh, let's suppose our population of interest is all students at, at a college. Well, when students have to register, they have to provide data to the college, right? So every single student that signs up at the college has to tell the college information, like give their address and their birth date and those kinds of information. So those, that data that every single student at the college gave the college is really a census, right? You're getting data from everybody at that college. So if your college uh, is your population and you collect data from every student at the college, well then you've done a census. Does that make sense? And obviously that data would be very, very useful because it, you, have, you have everyone in the population. Uh, another example, for example, the U.S. Census. Every four years we have the census in the U.S. And um, they try to get information from as many people that live in the U.S. as possible. And um, again, they don't really succeed in getting everybody. There's going to be some people that fall through the cracks. But they do get a very large po percentage of the population. Um, and again, that data is very useful to the U.S. government. Okay, so it gives them a good for a good idea of what's going on in the population. So census is getting data from everybody in the population, or at least trying to. Okay, but that is usually not what you can do in real life. Usually, especially if you're a you know a lowly statistician or data scientist trying to figure something out, you're probably not going to be able to do a census, especially if your population's big. Like if my population is everyone in California, there's no way I'm going to get data from every single person in California. So what I have to rely on is something called a sample. So if you can't do a census, then you're kind of resorting to what we call a sample. So a sample means you're collecting data from a small subgroup of the population. So, and it's usually quite a bit smaller than the population. Usually samples are less than 10% of the population, and it could even be way less. 
So a lot of times you might see a sample of 300 people, or you might see a sample of 50 people, or you might see a sample of, of 200 people. Okay? So a sample is a small subgroup of the population. You're collecting data from that small subgroup of the population. One of the key things is you need the sample to reflect the population. In other words, the, the sample should be representative of the population. So whenever you collect data, you want it to represent the population you're after. Because after all, that's what we're really trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what's going on with, with populations in the world around us. And this is the way we study what's going on in the world. Well, sometimes when you collect data, it is just messed up. The data is not reflective of the population you're after. We call that biased data, okay? So if you, if you collect data and your data does not reflect the population, we say that that data has bias. So when you hear the term bias or biased data in statistics, they're talking about that the data, for whatever reason, is really not representing the people in the, or the objects in the population. So when you start thinking about ways of collecting data, you also start thinking about bias. Is, there, is this data messed up? Is there ways? Uh, is this data going to reflect the population I'm after? So let's look at uh, some other ways of collecting data. One of the most common samples is to do something called a convenience sample. Um, this is very, very uh, popular with people that don't know statistics. So if you don't know statistics and you go out there and just start collecting data, you're probably going to do some kind of convenience sample. You're going to collect data in such a way that's really easy for you, or it's, uh, you're collecting data from people or objects that you, that you have easy access to. That's a really good way of thinking of convenience sample. Something that's really easy, right? So for example, I could ask my friends and my family, right? That would be a really easy, easy way for me to collect some data. But is my friends and my family going to really represent everybody in California? I don't think so, right? That, that data is not going to represent the, the population I'm after. It's full of bias, right? It has a huge amount of bias. In fact, convenience data, convenience samples tend to have a lot of bias. They tend to be not very good. They don't reflect populations very well. And you want to be very careful about making decisions about populations from convenience samples. Because a lot of times they're not really reflective of what's really going on in the population. Another example might be, uh, of convenience might be just standing outside of a store and asking people as they come out, you know, what do you think about taxes or something, right? So that, those would be very convenient, easy methods, somewhere where I, have, I get data from people that I have easy access to. But it's not, it's kind of a bad one, right? That's not, it's not going to reflect populations very well. Uh, another one that uh, has some problems is sometimes called the voluntary response sample. This is another very popular sample. This might be the most popular. Um, this is where you put a survey uh, out into the world and you allow people to self-select to be in your data set. In other words, you didn't choose them, they chose you. Okay, and that's always a kind of a bad idea. As a, as a data scientist or a data miner, we want to make sure that we are selecting the person or the computer is selecting the person and not letting the person self-select themselves to be in our data set. Okay, does that make sense? Now, it has nothing to do with survey. Every time we collect data, we're giving, asking people questions. That's a survey, but that has nothing to do with it. It has to do with, it's a survey that you allowed everybody to self-select themselves to be in your data. Right? You didn't, you didn't choose them, they chose you. So, for example, you might see like online surveys. Like you, you might be surfing the web and you might see a pop-up, right? Do you want to take this survey? And uh, how many people, how many of you, uh, when you, when you're surfing the web and you get a pop-up that says, do you want to take this survey? How many of you guys actually fill it out? Yeah, that's what I thought, right? Not many people fill that out, right? You're, you're afraid of identity theft, you're afraid of, of uh, you're afraid of um, a virus or something, you're going to click on it and your computer's going to get a virus or something. Um, not many people fill those out, and only kind of a special type of person would fill it out, right? So that's kind of one of the things that's a problematic with this. 
Uh, in the old days, we used to just take uh, some questions and we'd mail them to everybody in our population just about. So if I'm like I'm trying to get data from everybody in Reseda, California, right? Uh, what I might do is I might mail questions to every address in Reseda, California uh, and see what happens, right? And whoever happens to fill it out and email and mail it back to me is in my data. And then just like whoever happens to fill out the online survey and, and, and uh, is in my data. In other words, they selected, I allowed them to select themselves to be in my data. Now again, there is some problems with this. Um, it's kind of ask yourself what person would fill these out, right? It could be someone who's very bored, right? Has nothing better to do. They're like, ah, oh, sure, I'll fill out some, some data, right? Um, or it could be someone that feels very, very passionate about the subject. So if you're taking a, you know, trying to get some data on how people feel about raising taxes, um, and you do one of these online surveys, you get a lot of people that are super, super upset about the raising the taxes, right? But you don't really get the typical person who's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, it's, you know, I kind of go with the flow. You don't really get data from them. What you do is you get data from people that are, um, that are really, really either upset or really bored. So you tend to get data that's not very reflective of the population. Okay, this is another one that tends to have a lot of bias. On the outset, it seems like this would be a good idea, right? Putting a survey out into the world. But it actually doesn't work very well. It tends to give you a lot of bias. The data does not really reflect the population. It tends to reflect really upset people <laughs> and really bored people. Okay, so we got to be careful of voluntary response samples when we try to uh, make a decision about a population as well. So. If these voluntary response samples and convenience samples are kind of bad, well, what sample is good, right? What sample would be good? Obviously, census would be the best. That means collecting data from everybody. But I oftentimes can't do that. So if I got to do a sample, what sample do I want to do? So the go-to sample is a random sample, a random sample. So now we're getting into this word random. Again, remember how I said.